Hello, Mavs. I'm Asus. And I'm Ian, and welcome to Verbose. The UTA English Podcast. Hello, Mavs, and welcome to another episode of Verbose, the UTA English Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jesus, and with me, as always, is the beautiful, lovely Ian. Thank you. Beautiful and lovely, as always. Yeah, it is uh, Halloween at the time of this recording, so I hope everybody is having a fun time dressing in insert sexy whatever, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you're actually geez. wearing a custom right now, too. I am, yeah. yeah d- describe what you're wearing. Uh, it is a knight costume, minus the armor, basically. So you're not a squire? I'm not a squire. Oh, you're a full-blown knight. I'm a full-blown oh, knight. Oh, well, look at you. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, in uh, honor of the holiday, we're going to be discussing something spooky. We're going to be discussing HP Lovecraft. And yes, it's work. indeed, we are. I am. Uh, uh, I'm no expert when it comes to uh, Lovecraft, but you seem to be. I'm not an expert, expert, but I have. Uh, I have done some research. I have done some learning about him. Very complex man. So we're gonna be talking about his some of his stuff. Okay. All right. Well, Ian, why don't you go ahead and tell us about uh, Lovecraft? What, like, what, what was he? What was he all about? So he was. Uh, if any of you do not know, he was an American author. Uh, very, very famous. After his death, he was not very. Famous before his death for personality reasons mostly, which we will get into a little bit. (laughs) Anyway, he was born Howard Phillips Lovecraft on August 20th in 1890 in Providence, Rhode Island. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And Rhode Island's where he spent most of his life. He moved out to New York very briefly, eventually lived out the rest of his days again back in Rhode Island. Are you in like the big city? Well, he was... uh, Personality-wise, he was a bit of recluse. Um, mm. That's part of the reason that people didn't like him. Oh, really? Um, he, he didn't get out much. He didn't like going out. He was not a, a man about the town, so to speak. A lot of his works reflect that in, uh, in, in their main characters. Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right, well, um, from what I've read and from what I've heard about Howard Phillips Lovecraft is that his work is very um, different it's very unique for the time. It is. And it's very, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's avant-garde, but it's just it's very different from what everybody else was doing at the time. So what, what, what kind of themes are really um, prevalent? I think it's like madness and uh, fear of the unknown. To put it in context, at this time, gothic fiction was on the rise. It was very prevalent. Things, uh, there are things that are set during this time. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Okay. Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Mm-hmm. Uh, works like that. So gothic fiction was really on the rise. And that's a part of what Lovecraft does is he writes things that are, are gothic in nature. They deal with not only the supernatural, but also dealing with various cultural anxieties of the time, especially having to do with relations between England and the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stoker was a was an Irishman, so he wrote from the perspective of an, of an Englishman, but Lovecraft writes mostly from the perspective of Americans. So, it's oh, okay. it's an interesting twist on the the Gothic in that it comes from an American author, mm-hmm. whereas most of the Gothic authors were British. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Some of his major works are like At the Mountains of Madness, mm-hmm. um the Call of Cthulhu. C- okay, so we're going to have to apologize because we're probably going to butcher it. So, Every single time. Yeah, what are you going to say? Because I'm going to say Cthul- uh, Cthulhu. I, 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 I say The Call of Cthulhu. Oh, you say Cthulhu. Yeah. Okay, well, so just for right now, well, The Call of Cthul- Cthulhu, 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 C- Cthulhu, Hulu Plus, so like what, whatever. This is not an advertisement. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What, whatever, whatever you want to call it, The Call of Blah blah blah, Cthulhu. That not that uh, big which, tentacle monster. I know. I just wish that his most famous work was a little easier to pronounce because right. this is what every. I'm pretty sure this is what everybody came here for. So, um, and I just can't even. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that's um, true. So, okay, so you're gonna. All right, for just for consistency's sake, we're gonna say Cthu, Cthulhu. 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 Yes. Okay, so the call of Cthulhu and the Cthulhu mythos are yes. some of the works that he's most famous for. Um, Shadow over Innsmouth is is another one of his more famous works. Um, it's, it's a part of the whole cycle that is a beginning of the Cthulhu mythos. So, okay, so for the, um, I, I'm kind of familiar with the Cthulhu mythos, but for those that are uninitiated, oh, let's, what's the kind of like, 
What's the best way to describe it in a general sense? The Cthulhu mythos are all within the realm of what is called eldritch horror. Eldritch is an old word, literally an old English word, that means otherworldly, weird, or uncanny. Oh, sounds like fun. And the Cthulhu mythos deals specifically with things that are otherworldly, uncanny, weird, off in some way. Mm -hmm. Lovecraft himself deals a lot with, in his writings, I should say, he deals a lot with old gods, especially old mythological gods that okay, uh, okay. <laughs> that appear in um, such writings as uh, even the Bible in some cases. Oh, really? Dagon, Dagon? is mentioned mm. mentioned as a as a false god that uh, the nations around Israel worship in the Bible and things like that. Well, I'll be. Lovecraft himself didn't really adhere to a specific religion. Uh huh. If he did, he kept it pretty silent. Again, he was kind of a recluse. So. Okay, so um, generally, whenever his work is discussed. You described it as eldritch horror, which is things that are having to do with um, super powerful, super otherworldly powerful, beings. Otherworldly beings, and to my knowledge, the protagonists are often driven mad due mm -hmm. to the fact that this is something so grand, so beyond the scope of the human mind that it drives one to madness. Eldritch horror has come to mean that, mm -hmm. uh, especially in modern works inspired by Lovecraft. Okay. The Cthulhu mythos itself doesn't have to do with a lot of that necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's not, at least it's not gone in, there's not a lot of detail about it. Yeah. But in inspired works, the thing about it is that you're dealing with, the conceit of it is, you're dealing with something so beyond your capacity to think about it that it does drive you mad. It's rather complicated as well. I It's a lot more complex than I initially expected mm -hmm. because I heard the Cthulhu mythos, so I thought it was going to be an anthology about everyone's different experience with Cthulhu. And for those that are unaware, Cthulhu is the... Um, if you've ever seen that prolific image of a monster with wings that's green but has like a tentacle face, kind of looks like Davy Jones from uh, the, new, <laughs> the new parts of the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah basically... Um, Mr. Tentacle Face, that's Cthulhu. That's Cthulian, yeah. Yes, but there are other gods, and there's interstellar war and interdimensional beings. And there's a lot to it. Yeah, and I didn't realize that at first. I just thought it was Cthulhu, just the, mm -hmm. green, the big mm -hmm. green guy. Lovecraft, in writing his works, has these specific sections that he kind of puts them in, which he didn't name, but he, uh, he, he talks about them in his in some of his letters and the Cthulhu and the whole Cthulhu mythos, he doesn't start writing them until 1925 and it goes until around 1935. So he's writing these things for 10 years. Oh, okay. And mostly they're novellas, short fiction, things like that. So you don't mm -hmm. get a ton of detail. Mm. Well, I, I should uh, rescind that statement and instead put in the <laughs> fact that he has plenty of sensory detail. Oh, he's okay. He's very ver verbose yeah in, in the way he writes <clears throat> put the plug yeah <laughs> in the way he writes in his writing style he's extremely wordy a little flowery sometimes he's yeah very descriptive yeah i mean they have a lot of depth just because of what he's dealing with of course but they don't they're not very long mm, so okay. we can't develop entire things necessarily yeah but the mythos itself has gone so far beyond the scope of what lovecraft actually wrote mm -hmm. that it has inspired countless things even today mm, okay um so do you want to kind of dive into that because from what i noted lovecraft seems to be everywhere i know that guillermo del toro is a very big fan of lovecraft have you ever seen the film uh pan's labyrinth i have not but i've heard of it it is weird it is weird it's good it's good don't get me wrong but it is definitely weird and it involves creatures that are that can be described as uh, otherworldly mm -hmm. They're very grotesque, but in a beautiful way. <laughs> and um, I'm going to have to take your word for it. Honestly. Yeah, and as a gamer, um, the, uh, it was the release of uh, Bloodborne on the PS4 that was heavily inspired by Lovecraft. I mean, madness is a mechanic in the game. It is. For God's sake. So. Well, and there's an Stop interesting... Stop touching your zippers, sir. <laughs> Stop it. I, I do weird things when I'm when I'm talking. I do, I do things <laughs> with my hand, and, and Jesus is trying to stop me. I know that. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway, I forgive you. I forgive you. Thanks, man. All right, no problem. Anyway, um, there there's a lot to do with uh, otherworldly things in that game. Uh, they even have some specifically Cthulian inspired monsters. Oh yeah, like the amygdala. 
yes, it's mm-hmm. a there's a a boss in the in the game that is that is a very Catullian. It's very ugly. <laughs> it is very scary, but very Catullian. And actually, there are uh, role playing games that came out. I want to say in the uh, late nineties. Oh yeah, early the point 2000s. and click ones, right? And those are actually specifically call of like one of them is called Call of Cthulhu, mm-hmm. and it's it's I don't know if it's specifically based off of the the fiction itself. Yeah, it's probably not gonna mm-hmm. be honest, but it's interesting. So this is a completely arbitrary question, but what does the Call of Cthulhu, Cthulhu sound like? Does it sound like a squid? Does it sound like a like a or something like that? Or what is it, what would it sound like? Do you think? I think. Is it, it described in the books? I think it would probably sound like some kind of whisper whisper because of because of some of the themes i would think it'd be some kind of whisper in a language that you don't know but can somehow understand oh really yeah i think that'd be it honestly <laughs> oh really hey you wanna come on down i can understand that though come on down <laughs> but uh it's only it, one word of you <laughs> it's it's had a lovecraft's work has had a profound effect on a lot of different things and not just video games but Though specifically, it's, specific, it's had a, a yeah. very big effect on, on games. I was about to say, it might as well have been Lovecraft the game. <laughs> yeah. But with a lot more violence. <laughs> well, I mean, there are Lovecraft the games. Yeah, oh, Call, Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, it literally, it literally is called Call of Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. And they're making another one too, actually. Are they? Yeah, they're making a, they're making a, like a, a reboot. I think I have not heard of that. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I'm I, gonna have to check it out. I don't know. I was very disappointed. Didn't see the big green guy anywhere. It was just like a whole madness thing, and I was like, "Where's he gonna show up? Where's he gonna show up?" But that's kind of the whole conceit that you have to um, accept whenever you read Lovecraft. Because mm-hmm. I came to find that it doesn't read like traditional horror stories because it doesn't focus primarily on the monster, but it no. focuses on the effects. Yes. Of said monster. And that's. That's an important thing when discussing the themes that Lovecraft deals with in his fiction. One of the major themes that he deals with is not just madness, but the effect of otherworldly things on human minds. The effects that these these things that are outside of our understanding, um, as well as in some cases outside of our specific physical space, mm-hmm. has on on the the human brain, the human perception of reality. There's a whole idea in. Uh, presented in Lovecraft's mythos that has to do with his characters going mad. Mm-hmm. And this is actually oddly inspired from Lovecraft's own life. His his mother died while in an institution. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, she I, I uh, she had that. very severe psychosis and depression. Oh. So this is something Lovecraft himself dealt with. Oh. That does not sound like fun. No. One of the one of the major themes I want to I want to get through before we're done is why do people keep reading Lovecraft today? Yeah, because it's so complicated. His his language is so flowery. Like, why do people like it? Why yeah. why is the Cthulhu mythos injected into so many video games, movies, even music in some cases? Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, okay. uh, a lot of heavy metal music. Actually. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Makes sense now. I think part of the reason is his dealing with the fear of the unknown. Everyone can relate to that. Mm-hmm. It's not just this otherworldly being that's causing people to go mad with its bigness or whatever you want to say yeah it's the fact that humans have an innate fear of something that they can't understand or know Mm -hmm. that's why we fear the dark that's why the fear of the dark even exists Mm -hmm. and lovecraft plays with that in such an interesting way that it's born out into the modern era through video games through movies and all these things yeah i thought that um whenever i was doing research into cthulhu and the cthulhu mythos that the villain was going to be a lot more, you know, they were going to sit there, twirl their mustache, just very, very cliche and antagonist. But often the, I find that these creatures don't really have clear motives for what they're doing. Sometimes just their sheer existence is enough mm. to drive the human mind mad just yeah. because of their grotesque figure or because of their uh, way of being. Because uh, isn't one of them, like, um, mentioned just nothing but, like, tentacles? Yeah, there's a... I don't remember its name, but it's it's basically a mass of just tentacles and flesh. That's which is gross. Kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> but still, yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm, definitely, definitely. And you know, I think you, I think you really hit it on the head because the fear of the unknown is often very um, compelling. Mm-hmm. Not just because even with even when it comes to just benign things, 
when it comes to asking a question or asking somebody something that was on your mind, you asking don't know what they're going to date. Oh, dude, don't even get me started. I have so many <laughs> stories. Oh, my Lord. But, um, but yeah, just the fear of not knowing what's going to happen mm-hmm. next or just not being able to fully understand something yes. is enough to drive the human mind mad. You know, it's it seems very relatable, especially during the time that it was written. Yes. Because science was in full swing. Science, the Industrial Revolution was going on. Exactly. Uh, that's kind of another thing that Lovecraft deals with it, is that as technology grows, people rely less on conventional knowledge. Therefore, their minds can't process things as well as they used to, things like the supernatural, mm-hmm. which leads to a lot of madness. I was going to say, that's totally relatable in, today, in today's society. Do you know how hard it is to try to explain the Dewey Decimal System to children? I don't. Exactly. It's just like, no, I used to do this. I used to be able to remember all these numbers, mm-hmm. but I can't anymore because I'm stupid. Yeah. So <laughs> I just uh, take a photo with my phone. That's right. You know, because life is so much simpler that way. But yeah, this was definitely, definitely interesting. As someone who didn't know that much about Lovecraft, just hearing you talk about it, I feel a little bit more inspired to read the novels. I know that I'm going to have a hard time getting through all the wordiness and mm-hmm. all the Dickens-esque <laughs> paragraphs upon paragraphs of descriptors. But I'm definitely a little bit more interested. And I'm hoping that our potential listeners will decide to give the Cthulhu mythos. It's some said, interesting stuff. Weird that, right? and creepy, but Weird interesting. Weird and creepy? Okay, cool, cool. All right, well, thank you guys very much for joining us on yeah, this thank you guys. spooky Halloween episode of Verbose. So you can uh, see us and hashtag us at... Uh, oh, actually, why don't we leave them with a question? What is your favorite horror writer or favorite horror book genre maybe genre perhaps. specific like thriller or yeah. stuff like that exactly and then or just... if you have ever read Catullian mythos or have been inspired by anything Catullian, let us know in the comments yeah just hashtag verbose hashtag uta english thank you guys again very much for joining us i'm your host this is i'm ian and this has been verbose thank you for listening